What's going on you guys? Welcome to the channel. I am Mitchell with Mitchell's Lawn Care. If you're new, thanks for tuning in. If you're a uh, loyal subscriber, welcome back. Um, I'm located here in High Point, North Carolina. And this video is all about pretty much my story, my background, how I got to where I am right now, and what you see me posting, okay? I get asked all the time, you know, uh, about things people are seeing, how I got to this point. Um, some some people that are that are new, you know, don't know the story, um, and, and I can't expect um, you know everyone to go listen to podcast interviews where I have repeated this story uh, multiple times. So I, I felt like this would be a, a great opportunity to to put this topic, put this subject matter. Uh, here on the channel, so it's a searchable link um, that I can use, that you can use, and pretty much I want to take uh, some time, I don't know how long, could be 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, I don't know, however long it takes to get through. Uh, it's not scripted, I'm just going to speak from here and from here, okay? Um, but, you know, I, I want to tell, uh, you know, my story, how I got here, why I got here, and then and, and then kind of some some current event stuff that that people see on on social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and all the other uh, platforms out there. Okay, and there's also a reason why I am here in my now old shop. Okay, um, so I'm not going to delay anymore, and let's just dive right on into this. Okay. you guys so if, if hopefully the audio is okay uh, I'm using my Rode video mic pro on top of the camera I'm not using a lav mic um, hopefully it's not a bad echo um, so hopefully that the audio is okay you may hear some birds and sirens and other stuff in the background because I've got the door open to the shop here uh, let's see so I've got the door open to the shop uh, it's a gorgeous uh, gorgeous spring day here in North Carolina and I'll go ahead and start off the reason why I'm here in my now old shop. Uh, this is a uh, 12 by 24 old hickory building, loft barn. Um, and as you can see, like the, the pegboard behind me, I know it's blurry, but the pegboard behind me is uh, almost empty. Uh, this wall right here used to have my toolboxes and some other stuff. And uh, right over there was where my blade sharpening equipment was. So um, things are, are being moved out of here over to the new location. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, new to, to subscribing, uh, a new subscriber, uh, new to follow me on Instagram, uh, you will have seen some of those things, okay? And maybe you haven't seen this place. Um, but I will, uh, I, I'll throw up a card uh, here on the video that, that shows how this place was, okay? Uh, this is my old MLC shop, okay? Um, but, you know, we all come from somewhere, okay? So the way you see things now are not always how they were, okay? So those tuning in new, you know, see me, just me, um, you know, not, not a big crew, not, a, not multiple trucks, you know, a part-time lawn care guy with a big steel building for a shop, and they're wondering why, you know, what's the need? Um, but that's... That's not where I came from, okay? This building right here is not where I came from, okay? You can't see it because it's not there anymore. Um, but on the other part of my backyard, when I bought this house uh, 11 years ago, there was a little eight by 10 shed over there, okay? And I thought, oh, this is great. I got a place to, to keep, you know, little odd and end stuff. And very quickly overgrew or outgrew that building, okay? which is what led me to purchase this, okay? Um, and, you know, things evolve and, and, you know, business grows and I ended up outgrowing or uh, growing out of this um, and needed a place to store equipment so I could still have shop space, so I got the other building, okay? Uh, in that video that I tagged, 
you will see those things, okay? Um, and then, you know, business kept growing and kept growing and um, ultimately that's why the plan was to get the steel building um, that you have seen and the, the 50 by 60 steel building because my then full-time company needed the space, okay? And things changed um, and I scaled back, okay? So that's kind of the progression of why I've had the spaces that I've had. Um, you know, guys have asked, you know, if you're a solo guy, why do you need such a big building? I don't, but those plans were already put in the works when I was running a full-time company, okay? And uh, things were already paid for, so you know, that, that, that snowball was already rolling, okay? And there wasn't, uh, there was no stopping it. Um, so I've been blessed and fortunate, you know, through hard work and dedication to, to be where I'm at and to be able to have a space like that that Hannah and I can use for both business and personal use, okay? So, I hope this video helps you, okay, um, for a guy that maybe part-time wants to go full-time or a guy that's full-time wants to go um, part-time or uh, just getting started in the industry, okay? Um, so, I got started years and years and years and years and years ago as a kid, you know, pushing a push mower around my yard, you know. Many of you out there have probably done it. Um, some of you are probably doing it right now, depending on your age and, and what you got going on. Um, so that's kind of how I got a knack for, um, you know, the lawn care and, and, and mowing grass, okay? So I had a little 21-inch uh, mower. I don't even remember the brand. I mean, I was young. And uh, a, a buddy of mine, a uh, best friend of mine who also lived in the neighborhood, um, his parents had a riding lawnmower. Um, which was which was nice and he would come by on like a Saturday and pull his little landscaping cart that you know his dad had for the rotten mower he would bring that uh, he would drive over to my house in the neighborhood and we would use his riding mower and we would use that little cart little trailer to put my push mower trimmer and blower that I had in the cart I would jump in the cart and we would go mow a couple yards for like 20 bucks a pop okay little did we know we weren't making any money but at that time we had no expense and and, and no overhead um, and no responsibility you know uh, I don't think we were paying for the gas so you know those 20 bucks were going in our in our pockets so fast forward to to 2010 is when I started Mitchell's lawn care okay at the time it was just Mitchell's lawn care it wasn't LLC so I was just operating as a sole proprietor and I was trying to supplement my income for my full-time career as a, as a law enforcement officer and that time uh, you know that that day and age we were going through a recession so I wanted to supplement my income because we weren't getting pay increases or you know salary advancement we weren't getting any extra money you know um, we weren't getting raises and I had extra time on my hands so I was like you know what I've got a mower I've got a trailer I've got means to pull it and let's go do something with this because I don't do, do well just sitting around twiddling my thumbs, okay? So at the time, and, and this is going to hint to the fact that you don't have to have brand new stuff, the best of the best, to start your business. You just don't. So if you see the stuff that I've had in my company, if you're you know following me for the last couple years or the last several months and you see what I have, you don't have to have anything that I have to start a lawn care business, landscaping business, okay? Um, if, if you've got the means for the basics, uh, a vehicle for transportation, okay, as long as it's, you know, reliable, um, you don't necessarily have to have a trailer. If, if the stuff you're using can fit in the back, then, then go for it. If it's an SUV, a car, whatever, I've seen people do all sorts of things. As long as you can get the equipment that you need to the job site to, cre to, to complete the job and collect the pay, that's all you need, okay? You don't need a $70,000 pickup truck with a $100,000 setup. You just don't. That's a lot of overhead, okay? And, and it's not a great way to start out, okay? Unless you're just financially stable and, and, and able to, okay? But... In 2010, at the time I was driving a 2004, I think it was a 2004 um, 
black Chevy Suburban with super high miles on it, okay? I had had it for several years, um, and uh, I would try and throw up a picture of it if I can find one, but I had a Chevy Suburban, um, and this picture that I think I have, uh, the trailer you are seeing is not the trailer that I started with, okay? Um, I have a little six or seven foot trailer that's custom made. My, my dad and my grandfather built it, and that's what I started with, okay? The, the Chevy Suburban and that tiny little trailer, which I still own today. Um, I had a three or four year old Craftsman 42 inch riding mower um, that I used when I lived in a, another place. Had a, had a pretty large yard that I was mowing just for me. Um, so I had that Craftsman riding mower. I still had this, uh, an old push mower that my grandfather had given me. And I was like, well, I, you know, I, I need a good trimmer and a blower. So I went to Lowe's and I bought an Echo trimmer and a Husqvarna um, 150BT backpack blower, first backpack blower I ever bought. And I still have every single piece of equipment that I started with 11 years ago. Um, and I hope to one day get everything back together. That riding mower, uh, I gave it to my mom and dad to let them mow their yard with. Um, but I still have the trimmers, I still have the blowers, I still have the trailer and the mower that I started with 11 years ago. So if I needed to, I could, if I had to, I could go back to doing it the way I used to, okay? But that's how I started. Um, so I pretty much started somewhat in the hole because I had to, to purchase those few pieces of equipment, um, but I wasn't leasing anything. So I started mowing yards and I quickly realized that I could not charge 20 to 25 dollars a yard like I used to when I was a kid because now as an adult I've got what responsibilities and overhead because now I've got to buy the gas pay for the truck pay for everything insurance all that stuff and 20 to 25 dollars a cut was not cutting it no pun intended okay so I, I, I reached out to some people that I knew in the industry. Of course, this was all pre-social media. So I was just contacting guys I knew that, that cut grass or had done it or whatever, and was picking their brain on, on how to, you know, how to price jobs and that pricing structure, which still happens to this day. You know, people are reaching out to me now wanting to know that. And, you know, it, it's up to us to pass that torch so this industry evolves and we're not stuck in the 1980s pricing okay our prices need to go up just like everything else does okay um you know don't be the the chuck in a truck like paul jameson says charging going around charging 20 dollars a cup because you're not going to make it um so got my prices up and started started mowing and i was cutting for friends and family i was cutting for a co-worker and you know, uh, I had enough properties to keep me busy for, you know, up until lunch, you know, maybe six or seven properties. And I was driving, you know, anywhere it took. So I, I, I did not understand the concept of route density or wind chill time at, the, at that time, you know, because I'm just trying to get my, my company off the ground and running. Um, and at that time, I really didn't even think it was a company because I was trying to make some extra spending cash. So when I got started, I didn't have business cards, I didn't have embroidered hats, I didn't have uniform shirts, you know, I was just a dude out cutting grass trying to make an extra dollar. Um, you know, all that stuff can come later, okay? You don't need to be worried about your image right out of the gate. Um, you know, now take that lightly, but you need to focus on doing quality work and being there when you say you're going to be there so communication and that's what i focused on doing a quality job and doing it when i said i was going to do it and if i couldn't be there or do it when i said i was going to do it i communicated with a client and communication is so so important okay and especially when it comes to the fact that you know if you mess up something you know be honest being honest with the co the client is just as important okay so being honest and communication um, I ended up putting some flyers out uh, in in a neighborhood and uh, just printed out on a Microsoft Word document 
you know, um, I don't have any business degree. I didn't get these ideas from anybody. Uh, I just knew that if I wanted to get more yards, I had to do something so people knew that Mitchell's Lawn Care was a thing. So I just went on computer, Microsoft Word, uh, used some pick art. Uh, I think that's what they call it, pix art, whatever, um, of a guy on a, on a mower and just said Mitchell's Lawn Care. Here's the price, you know, neighborhood price. Pretty much all the houses in that neighborhood were the same price. And I just went, you know, door to door, putting out, you know, handing out flyers. And ended up putting a, or ended up giving a flyer to a gentleman um, that owned many rental properties uh, in, in the city where I lived. And he contacted me and he said, hey, I'm looking for someone to give me a quote on X number of properties. Wonder if you're interested. I instantly said, you know, heck yes, you know, when and where do I need to be? So we talked, I hung up the phone and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm getting into, but I've got to figure it out. So long story short with that, um, ended up um, servicing or getting the bid on his, and I think it was because I was a little too low, but I ended up getting his rental properties and his uh, personal yard which catapulted me from, you know, pretty much being the six yard a day, you know, half a day guy to, I now had a full, full day of work and I, I needed someone to help me. So, um, you know, the part-time business owner needed a part-time employee to work with them. So every time, every week that I went out, it was two guys and I was leaning on coworkers of mine because we all had the same schedule. Um, and my brother at the time too, but so, for a few years, for, for about six years, I operated the company just like this. And it kind of got to the point where it were flat line, but I, I was happy, I was content. Um, and I was honestly probably doing more than what I should have been doing at, at a part-time level. Um, but the opportunity came up. I was contacted by a property management company. How they found me out, I don't know. Probably word of mouth, because we all know word of mouth advertising is priceless. But I was, I was reached out to by a management company um, and they wanted to know if I wanted to give a quote on uh, a couple properties, some HOA properties that they managed. And just like in, in 2010, 2011, I was like, yeah, sure, you know, when and where do I need to be? Hung up the phone and I'm like, what in the world am I getting myself into? I can't even take on any more work. Um, I don't have the time. I physically cannot do it. So I have pretty much had to come to Jesus meeting with myself. And this was the point in my business career where some of you may be, where you're teeter tottering between part-time and full-time, you know, should you do it? Can you do it? So I had to ask myself or tell myself, you know, is this something that's worthwhile? You know, don't get hung up on the dollar amount. How are you going to do it? Um, when are you going to do it? And I knew the only way that I could venture from part-time work, part-time lawn care to full-time was to have somebody to put in place that I could rely on, um, i.e. a crew leader. Um, because in essence, I was holding Mitchell's lawn care back from going full-time because I myself could not do it. The business could, but I couldn't. So, talked to a good buddy of mine and presented him the the options of, of this could be, you know, this is what I need, yada, 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 um, and presented my quotes and I ended up getting the job, um, jobs. Called my buddy and said, hey, I landed the jobs. This is what I need from you. This is what I'm paying you. This is what I expect from you. This is what you can expect from me. Can I count on you? You know, he said, hey, let me speak to my wife. Called me back the next day and he said, hey, I'm all yours. And it was at that point that I knew I was no longer going to hold the company back and that we could start building, you know, on top, you know, the, these stepping stones. Okay. So that was 20, that was like late 2015 going into 2016. Um, and at this point, when I knew I had my crew leader in place, it was just him. So he was now handling the jobs that I used to handle once a week, but now we're adding some other stuff to it. And 
I had to make some sacrifices. Luckily, I had my full-time career to kind of subsidize thing and invest in my company and get the ball rolling. But, you know, I told my crew leader, hey, you know, you're, you're going to be 40 hour a week salary, okay, full time, but I don't have full time work for you right now, okay? But, you know, I was hungry, I, I, I wanted this thing to take off and I wanted it to work and I knew I had to provide for him in order for him to stay with the company, okay? Because he too was making sacrifices. Um, so, I had about three days worth of work for him but I never rested. I never gave up. I keep, you know, I, I kept, you know, hitting the pavement with boots running and was doing everything I possibly could to get the name out there. And I, I, it was pretty much at this point that I knew I had to do something with the image of the company, you know, so I had some magnets made for the side of the, the, the truck, had some t-shirts made, had some hats made. And you don't have to do anything crazy or expensive, just basic stuff. And it, it is professional, and we always went with bright colors because of working outside around people's properties, traffic, stuff like that. I wanted customers to know that if we were on property, we would be wearing this. This is what they could expect. And someone in bright clothing walking around a property in a flower bed, um, is a lot less suspicious than dark colors, okay? So, you know, middle of the day, you're in a flower bed at the window and Little Miss Betty sees, you know, bright green or bright orange shirt, they can rest at ease that, hey, this is, you know, somebody, a contractor or whatever, it's not somebody trying to break into the house. But So I was focused more on the image of the company. Um, and, and one thing started leading to another, you know, we started getting calls, we were doing good work and I was still working with the business as much as I could. I was helping my crew leader as much as I could. Um, I wasn't just kicked up on the sofa, you know, with my feet up. So when I could, I was still out there, you know, working and, you know, making sure the, the quality was up, communication was up, image was up, you know, and, and we looked good and we're doing good. And word of mouth marketing is literally what catapulted the company into full-fledged full-time to the point where you know ultimately we needed more guys because my crew leader was like hey I need help I can't do all this by myself um, so operated the company 2016 2017 2018 and 2019 full-time with three full-time crew members and it was great money was good now, granted, I still had my full-time career on the side. So if you're that guy that has a career and trying to build a business, it's going to take good people working for you and you've got to be a good role model, supervisor, manager, owner, everything um, in order to retain those people. You just can't be a boss sitting inside collecting money and shooting out orders. Um, you know, times have changed. You know, a lot of people don't respect that anymore. And I always led with the philosophy and, and thought that I would never ask my guys to do something. I would never tell my guys to do something that I wouldn't do myself. You know, if I asked them to shovel crap all day, you better believe that I would get out there and shovel it with them. So that, that was a good managerial tool. So hopefully that's a word and it gets on me because of my grammar sometimes. But uh, um, anyways, you know, lead, it, it pretty much is lead by example. Okay. So if you can do that, you know, for the most part, you should be able to retain people. Now we know people are people and people are going to be people and you can't, you know, control everything. But, you know, have good managerial skills um, and you shouldn't really have an issue with retention as long as you're paying good and you create a good work environment. Now, 2019 to 2020, things changed. I was really getting stressed out with running a full-time company. Um, you know, em employees were doing things and, and customers were doing things. And I just, I wasn't, overall I wasn't happy with the direction that my life was headed. And I knew something had to change. And the only thing that was going to change it was to scale back 
I remember how good things were when I was running part-time that it was a lot less stress, a lot less overhead, and I really enjoyed the work. Um, when I was running full-time, I couldn't always be there when things went, went bad. I couldn't always be there to, to supervise the guys when they needed supervision because I had a full-time career, you know, and my hands were tied to that. So I was really relying on my crew leader more than I should have. And a lot of times I was expecting my crew leader to do things that I should have been doing. Um, and sometimes that's a recipe for disaster, uh, unless you have a really, really, per really, really good person in place. So I knew something had to change from 2019 to 2020. So I made the decision that Mitchell's Lawn Care, um, now LLC, was gonna go back to a part-time role with just me and no employees. So that's basically what you see now. Um, 2020, I, uh, I, I didn't do exactly what I had planned. Um, I ended up keeping too many properties and to the point where I needed a part-time guy to help me. So I was still relying on someone other than me. And that ended up backfiring about halfway through the year uh, when my part-time guy kind of for the lack of better words, flaked on me and left me stranded like mid-season, you know, going into the fall with, you know, well, pretty much the busiest time of year when you got leaves and, and aerations and overseedings, et cetera, um, left me high and dry. So I, I, I buckled down, you know, Hannah said, hey, you know, do you need to let some of these properties go? You know, and I, I told her, I said, listen, I've had these properties all year. I'm not going to drop these people mid season. It's just not the right thing to do. You know, I, I will literally work the skin off my bones to make this happen. Um, and then change things going from 2020 to 2021, which is what I did. Um, so from 20, from 20 to 21, I, I scaled back even more to the part, to the point where now I have a property list that Mitchell can handle by himself and I don't need any help. I'm not taking on jobs where I need any help. Um, for the most part, if, if, if I need help, it's just because I'm, I'm choosing to make a job even easier than it really, you know, should be. Um, but 2021 so far has been a wonderful, wonderful year. My decision to scale back from full-time back to part-time has been the best decision I've ever made. Um, there are times when, you know, I, I miss the, the beast the, of, of being full-time. You know, I miss the guys and interacting with them. Um, but for the most part, where I'm at now is where I want to be. Um, I said in an interview with, with Paul Jameson, the Green Industry Podcast, back in February, uh, and I believe Kay, uh, Caleb Allman with um, um, Kid Contractor that, you know, a lot of people have five, 10 year plans where they want to scale, grow, 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 grow. Mine is to flatline and plateau because I'm happy and I don't want to disrupt that. I've got a good property list. The money coming in is what I want. I don't want anymore. So I'm happy. So my business model from now indefinitely is just to to maintain and there's nothing wrong with maintaining and i'm saying that because you know a lot of people get it in their head that they've got to grow they got to get bigger 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 and that's not always the best it's not for everybody you know so if you've got that mentality then then go for it and experience it and see for yourself if it's something that you really want for yourself okay um putting a bunch of people in place to do jobs for you can be highly stressful, um, you know, and you've got to be able to cope with the stresses that come along with it. Um, I could handle it. I just didn't want to. Um, I could handle it. I didn't need to. So not having to and not needing to was pretty much the reason why I am where I am today. So for you tuning in today that you know, sees just one guy and, and so much equipment and, you know, certain things around. That's the reason why I have some of the things I have is because of running what I considered a successful full-time company for four years. And I, I have been hungry 
since day one. I've been a hard worker since day one. Um, I have sacrificed many things. I've sacrificed going on vacation, spending time with friends and family, you know, for many years to get to where I am. Nothing was handed to me. Nothing was given to me. Um, so if you, in, in my social media posts, on pretty much every single one, I do two hashtags. Hashtag earned, never given, which stems from my patrol academy. And then hashtag hard work pays off. And those two could not be any more true, excuse me. Because if you go out there and you bust your tail, you're honest and you do a good job, it will pay off. And I'm a testament to that. I wouldn't have any of the stuff around me or stuff that you see if it wasn't for hard work, okay? And the reason I say earned, never given, is because it's all those long hours in sacrifice, dedication, motivation, you name it, that have put the things in place to get me to where I am right now. And it's gonna take that from you to get to where you want to be. And if you're a hard worker and you bust your tail, you don't take no for an answer, and you do the things that I did, I promise you, you can have everything that you've ever wanted, you'll have all your needs met, and you too can have things that you see and think, that's what I gotta have. Um, but I'm here to tell you a lot of the stuff that you see that I have, you don't need. Um, but the services that we were offering led to the equipment purchases that I had, okay? Now, I'm very humble, I never forgot where I came from, and um, I, I loved every minute of, minute of it. And if, if I could change anything, you know, about what I went through or what I did in my, you know, professional career with long care, you know, in the last 11 years, I, uh, I wouldn't change anything. You know, I experienced a lot of stuff. I learned a lot of stuff. I learned a lot about business. Didn't go to school for business. Let me check my time. I didn't go to school for business. You know, they call it, I guess, the school of hard knocks. You know, a lot of people ask me or, or say, you know, man, you, you sound like you know a lot. Um, I really don't. I just, sometimes I have the gift of gab and I know how to ask good questions to people that, that you know, have answers. And, you know, and I, I don't always stick with one person. You know, I'll ask the same question to three, four or five different people to get a different point of view. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that. And that doesn't mean that the first person you asked is wrong. You know, there's nothing wrong with getting multiple points of view because the way I think something should be or should go may not be the way the next guy, uh, you know, thinks it should be. But the way I tell you to do it and the way they tell you to do it, you can take those two um, uh, point of views, put them together and make your own. Um, you know, and that's how we, uh, we evolve and become the people that we are. So... That's pretty much the story of Mitchell's Lawn Care. And, and for the foreseeable future, I don't plan on changing anything. Um, I switched from high -vis green to orange last year because the company changed directions. Um, high -vis, or not high -vis, but uh, orange has been my favorite color since I, was, since I can remember. So I wanted to you know, make it my own again. Um, so that's why I changed from, from, or, from high -vis yellow or green, however you see it, to, to orange. Some guys wondered why. And it was the, the change in direction of my business, you know, that kind of symbolized, you know, the, the change for me. Um, I'm going to, to maintain the way things are. You know, I'm, I'm happy. Um, I've really enjoyed the social media aspect of it. And this is probably the last thing that I'll close with. Um, social media has been a lot of fun. I never thought that I would be sitting in this building, um, you know, as it slowly starts to empty on uh, my camera talking to you you know I, I was always shy or you know got anxious in front of cameras so the fact that I'm you know looking into this camera right now I don't see it as that anymore you know I see it as you know people like-minded people like myself on the other side um, and, and guys that and, and girls that are going through what I went through want to go the direction I went or want to go a different direction, you know. So that's who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to the camera. So, I'm, you know, social media has has evolved me, and it's allowed me to 
tap into this green industry community that I love so much. And, and, you know, being able to meet you guys, whether it, you know, be, you know, just on social media or at events that we go to uh, has been a ton of fun. I've learned a ton in the process. You know, YouTube, you know, we're here on YouTube is new to me, fairly new. So I think we're nine, 10 months into this. I don't know. I started my channel at the end of July last year and, um, it's been a fun adventure since then. Um, you know, I, I've got tons of content in my head that I want to keep, you know, keep, keep coming. And, uh, you know, the upload schedule of Monday and Thursday has been, has been easy. I started out doing three uploads and that was kind of tough, but, um, I, what I'm getting at is I, I love the social media aspect of this, uh, green industry community. Um, you know, there is some hate that comes along with it, you know, because, as much as I am a contractor in the industry, um, you know, I've also assumed the role of, you know, social media influencer and I, and I do partner with brands. Um, some of them over, some of those, those partnerships are paying, you know, I do get a commission off of things. Um, some are product deals. And, uh, if, if someone, if I was to see her today and say that, you know, uh, I don't do it for the money or I don't do it for the product, I would be a liar. You know, who, who wouldn't? Um, but what I stand firm on is the fact that I never and I will never represent, work with, promote a company or a product that I don't use on a weekly basis or in my business. So. I try to never use the terminology of this is an honest review because to me that throws red flags because if you have to say this is an honest review, then what are your other reviews? Anything that I bring to people that I use in my company that I promote or, you know, offer a discount deal with, it's stuff that I literally believe in and I use in my company, whether it be and I'm not saying brands right now, but whether it be shoes or headphones or, um, you know, mowers or, or whatever, you know, um, spreaders. Um, so I've drawn a blank, uh, software, um, you know, I use those things day in and day out when I'm out working and, and all too often some influencers, and I'm not saying names, but some influ influencers promote things just for that kickback. And you never see them, or you rarely see them, use what they're promoting. And those are the people that I think are toxic in this community. And I, uh, I, I strive to never, ever be like them. So, you know, you will, you will never hear me say, this is an honest review. Because everything I put out is honest. I have no reason to tell you otherwise. I'm not going to lie to you to get a few bucks. I'm not going to lie to you to get a free piece of equipment. I'm not. Um, and that's another reason why I lean back on the hashtag earned never given because I don't see that any of that stuff has been given to me and all the other influencers that are out there that I'm friends with and that I believe in and that I support. None of that stuff was given to them. Um, as a social media influencer, it is a business just like everything else. You know, YouTube is fun for me now, but it's also a business. Instagram is fun, but it's also a business. And it's that way for some of us, not everybody, you know. Um, and you don't have to like it, but at least respect it. Um, there, there's a movement out there where guys always hate on that stuff. You know, oh, they're just saying that because they got a free piece of equipment or blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, they wouldn't have gotten that if they wouldn't have put in the time um, and the sacrifice to get to where they are and and to build the following around them by being good people um, if it wasn't meant to be or if they didn't earn it um, so I have no signs of stopping I have no signs of slowing down I love this community I love engaging you guys and I just wanted to to spend some time I don't know how long this has been 30 minutes I don't know 40 minutes um, I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to put it together. I may throw in some pictures of some stuff while, while, while doing this, but, uh, I just wanted to give my backstory, tell where I'm from and, uh, 
you know, that way people know who Mitchell is and who Mitchell's long hair is. Sorry. Um, but uh, I look forward to engaging you guys. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, if you enjoyed this story, I would love it if you guys would give the video a big old thumbs up. Um, that helps the algorithms, they say, with YouTube. It helps push the video out there for more people to see, um, which is what I want. I want more people to see this that might be in the same boat as me, in the same boat as you, okay? Um, and never hesitate to say something in the comments uh, because something you say, a question you ask, someone else might be thinking the same thing. And you can help me help other people, and that's what it's all about, all right? But, uh... I think that's pretty much it. I didn't have a script. I didn't write anything down. No bullet, uh, no bullet points or nothing like that. Um, I, I cannot thank you guys enough for the support that you've given me over the last eight to nine months of this uh, endeavor. Let's see: August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Wow, ten months. Um, so, so ten months here on YouTube. So, thanks for the support. Uh, I hope that we continue to get out there and and do good work. Um, and that's it. Y'all have a wonderful day.